Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for the for the end of the story here. And we would ask for your blessing upon us that we would live abundant, joyful lives and uh, look for opportunities to share your love, mercy, and grace. Transform me, O Lord, so I can make a difference. We'd ask for your healing touch on our church family up and down the, the pews and the aisles and the view screens. Bring blessing, we pray, so that we can be a massive blessing to others. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Good amen. morning, all. Welcome. We're in the final chapter of the final book of the scriptures, uh, Revelation 22. So it, it sparks the thought in me that says, well, the scripture is all written and sealed and um, so does God still speak to people today? And the answer is yes, but not with the same authority as the scripture. Good morning, Linda. In other words, when we have a prophecy, is that God speaking? Yes. But do we know it's God speaking? Uh, yes, because we have the gift of discernment, but we also have the scriptures to fall back on to see if the words of the prophet are appropriate for what the word of God says. So though God speaks to people today, the gauge for it, the judgment for it, is does it line up with the Spirit, and more importantly, does it line up with the Word of God? If you have a prophecy that nobody has ever had in history, you need to be a little careful not to be prideful about it, but also to make sure that it really lines up. There was one one guy that wrote serious books about... Or, serious verbiage anyway, about the three stars in the belt of Orion, and he kept calling that the gate to heaven. But the three stars only line up from Earth. They're, they're light years apart. So when you really look at that, that's a false prophecy because that's not, that's not even close to true. So we have prophecy, and we're grateful for it. We have the gift of prophecy, and we're grateful for it. But the, but the line up for it has to be, does it line up with the Word of God? Okay, I think we're in the uh, New American Standard today, and I think we'll pick it up in 12. Yeah, um, right. Uh, yes, yeah, so verse 12, Revelation 22, NASB. Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. To reward each one as his work deserves. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So he's the eternal one, and what, uh, reward each one as his work deserves. And and uh, and the reward is crowns or jewel in your crowns and stuff. But none of that stuff matters to me per se. Walking with Jesus is what matters. If I just do it for the reward, then it's kind of self-serving. Um, when we first come to Christ, we come to him because of the, of the benefits, that he'll never leave us or forsake us. We have a promise of eternal life. We have a hope and a promise. But as we grow in him, it's not about me, it's about him. And, uh, and no. so the, the rewards are just an afterthought. Like, um, no. you know, kids in high school work really hard to get good grades. And all of a sudden they look up and they're third in their class or second in their class or first in their class. And that's a great reward, but, it, you know, they, they got it from their hard work. And, um, and we need to be obedient because we love Jesus, not because, you know, there's, a, oh, there's another jewel in our crown. Because the jewels in our crown are... Uh, are, are are tiny compared to the jewels of this great city. <laughs> like, it just matters how you look at it. So, um, no, but I, do, think, you know, I look at this, I'm about to do exactly what the book counsels me not to do. Uh -oh. I'm going to change one word. <laughs> uh, I said, uh, it's a verse 12, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. What if we just drop the word with and say, my reward is me? There you go. I certainly think... That's the greatest reward of all to be to be with the Lord on His side of things. And with the, and with me still works in that. Myself from that side. Anyway. And, and the with me still works with that. My reward is that you are with me. Um, works. Yeah. There you go. 
Okay, so he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and the first and the last. That, that's three ways of saying the identical thing, except they're all somewhat different. Um, he, <laughs> the, the, uh, the awesomeness of being omnipotent and omnipresent and all of the omnis that God is, um, first and last, the beginning, the end, the first, the alpha and the omega. Um, it's almost redundant in English, but it goes way beyond that in the originals. But it's enough to know that he is the bookends of life, but he is more than the bookends of life. He is the tree of life. He is the essence of life. He is the hope of life. He is the redemption of life. I am the alpha and omega, first and last, beginning and the end. I believe that this is his way of saying that this is the finality here. This is the great wrap up. I started this thing. I'm about to end it. That's right. And uh, this is this is the totality of the picture. Uh, my and uh, the rewards is part of that final uh, final act, so to speak, final right. play here. Um, verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life. Okay, so clean, cleansed robes. Uh, and we, th we think about the yeah. parable, too, where the guy gets, gets invited to the wedding supper and doesn't have his robe cleaned, doesn't have the good stuff on. And you think, what a, what a standout. I mean, the maitre d' of the wedding looks up and everybody's got these beautiful robes on and he doesn't. You think, what are you doing? You know, so, and we're... We're obviously mixing metaphors here because this is being washed, having our souls washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yep. And then that takes us to the tree of life and the entry to the city gates because, because Christ has paid for all our sins and has washed them clean as if they, um, as if they never existed, uh, you know, expunge them from our records, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, the pain, yeah, the debt of sin is paid for. Hopefully, we learn from them. That's right. I mean, that's, why do we go through all of that? You know. <laughs> and at this point, though, we have new. down and have an appreciation that we wouldn't have otherwise had. Um, and um, I think that's what it's about. And part of it, what all of this is about. There you go. Fifteen. Fifteen. Outside of the dogs. That's a euphemism for. Uh, Gentiles, uh, for outsiders, okay, uh, people that are outside the faith, including the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices <clears throat> lying, people who love and practice it, people who live by the lie. So we, uh, uh, we've heard this sentence before, or similar to it in the previous chapters, and you wonder why do we have to hear it again? Well... <laughs> I had to hear lots of things over and over again when I was a child because, and even in my adulthood, because I didn't get it the first or second time. So it's not, it, it, it's not a waste of ink and paper for God to tell us things more than once. And Paul even says, I don't get tired of telling you the same stuff over again because you need to know it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and it's, it's again, it's, it's making the point that there's a, this is the great separation. This right. is so... Uh, uh, this is the um, divergence of paths yep. into uh, uh, destinies, different destinies. Yep. Um, uh, yes, verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you of these things. Now, remember the, uh, the delivery from God the Father to the Son, to the angel of the Lord, to John, to the churches, <laughs> to all believers. Um, so uh, my angel will testify of these things <clears throat> for the churches was the uh, specific uh, end point for this message in the, uh, the beginning of the book. Mm. I am the root and the descendant of David. Okay, the root and the descendant. Uh, uh, the bright and morning star. And there's, there's quite a bit written about those things, but uh, we, we need not delve into them here. Verse 17, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who...
one who desires take the water of life without cost. Jesus, going back with John on this list, Jesus, of course, paid the price for life, for our life, for our eternal life. So the, for the water of life for believers um, is there available without cost. And that is the source of our sustenance going forward. Um, anyone who desires, anybody who has that desire for the Lord has it because um, he has that, the, uh, the righteous spirit that, that, uh, that calls to him and, and it calls back to, uh, to the Lord. Uh, the relationship is there. Um, but the one who is thirsty come and thirsty again is thirsting for righteousness, thirsting for the love of Christ, thirsting for the agape loves, uh, uh, life uh, that uh, is uh, to be um, lives going forth. And uh, so, 17, um, uh, 18, I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city which are written in this book. Wow. Huh? So, yeah, rather, uh, rather dire uh, consequences here are so perceived, uh, so uh, presented that you uh, have to be very careful with this. Um, yeah, uh, again, but, uh, you know, the embellishments we give, we're speaking from our own experiences, from our interpretations. Uh, we share them with you. We are not... Uh, we are not trying to uh, recompose or distort the word, uh, the word of God, but uh, to bring forth what we have experienced from reading it. This is this. You really have to read this stuff for yourself. All of it, the whole Bible. You have to let it speak to you. Um, the, one primary suggestion I make is that uh, understand it from within the spirit of agape. Yep. Uh, it, uh, it, I think it's a, a critical um, position that you need to make, get yourself into, uh, in order to interpret interpret this stuff properly. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and take it literally. For uh, you know, unless you know, as you read it, you realize there is no such uh, literal. It's not uh, uh, the literal interpretation is virtually impossible. Um, there are over two hundred grammatical. Um, structures in the bible that uh from, you know analogies to allegories to poetry to similes and metaphors and so forth um and uh, you, uh but start with the literal and and drill down on that as hard as you can uh before you move on to well this must be a symbolic interpretation could be that for your time at that moment yeah. that's the way you are to take that particular phrase there you go but in the future, you may find a, a more literal interpretation uh, that speaks more more plainly to you. So, so more, just to amplify on that thought, how yeah. do we understand the scriptures? We first of all believe that every word is God breathed. Secondly, if something is puzzling, we look at the immediate context. The immediate context is the most telling thing. The third thing we do is look where else it is used in the scripture in that in that Greek or Hebrew um, uh, verbiage. And then, and then we look at, so you're five steps away or something from literally understanding it, obviously, to, to going to any of the 200 um, word images that, that some, num somebody came up with. Um, you're a long way away from that. That's not your first jump. That's your fifth or sixth jump to say, okay, well, and so we believe the Bible is inherently true and verse by verse and word by word true in its originals. And so, and it, it strikes me that, I don't know, 90, in my brain, 90, 95%, 98% is just like it says. Uh, there's a little bit that we have to think, okay, God, 
Um, when I see you face to face, I'll have you explain it to me because it doesn't make any sense. And then we get to the um, uh, similes and metaphors and those kind of things. So it's a... Uh, now, if you instantly jump to the scriptures are metaphoric, then it really takes away from the personalness of the primary parts of the scripture. Yeah, it snowballs on you too. It's, uh, for instance, if you take a, uh, a more allegorical approach rather than a literal approach, uh, you may change things as uh, mom momentous as um, the uh, when the second com when the first and second coming occur when. Uh, what the uh, millennium is all about, how radically different it is from church to church, the interpretation of the millennium. Some people, it's just a concept. Um, some people have tried to preach that it's already here. Uh, uh, you know, um, so it's, um, it's a challenge. It's meant to be. And uh, it's, a ch uh, it's a faith tester at every step. Yes. Uh, again, it's meant to be. Amen. Uh, you, you show how earnest you are about understanding the things of God by continuing to pursue, even if you don't have uh, a rock solid, clear as a bell understanding at the moment, you grow into it. Yes. And, uh, and you, if keeping after it is uh, that diligence and that pursuit, that um, um, tenacity uh, is, I believe, very pleasing to God. Amen. As long as, you're right foot, as long as you're on the right track, and if you're, you know, again, if you're walking the spirit of agape, and you're, and you're leaning on that spirit, and you're, tr and you're looking to the word literally first, um, you should be, you should be in good, good shape. You should be in pretty good shape. And, Amen. Uh, yeah, and let yourself be challenged by those who aren't believers. Uh, don't put yourself in a precarious position. I'm not suggesting that you jeopardize yourself in any way, but. Uh, listen to their arguments and understand what, you know, where they're coming from. Why are they not getting some of the things that we get? Or is it deliberate? Is it uh, um, simply a lack of understanding? Um, do they want to be deceptive or are they simply deceived and reflecting that deception? Very important because that's, you know, that's Satan at work. Where there's deception involved, uh, the big bad guy is, is to bet on it. Amen. So, he who testifies to these things, yes, I'm coming soon, amen, come Lord Jesus. Puzzling verse in so many ways, because the early church believed that he was coming in that century. But if he had come in that century, I would never would have been born and then never would have been saved. So, his delay in his return is to allow more and more folks to be saved. And... And he's not impatient about his return. He, he's, right. he doesn't have high levels of anxiety. Should I come today? Should I come tomorrow? Yeah. I'm coming soon. Yeah. Anxiety is, a, is a, a byproduct of um, uh, living in this time dimension. God's outside of that. So time is not a factor. So he doesn't have that, uh, that, that pressure. It doesn't exist for him. Doesn't Amen. really exist for us either because he has already stepped up, stepped us into an eternal perspective. There you go. Uh, um, so, um, yeah, I would say if we had to summarize the book, how would you do it? I would say this. First of all, I think it's. Um, uh, let's not it's let's not summarize so, yeah. first until we read twenty one, Rich. Okay, good idea. The grace of the Lord Jesus uh, be with all. Amen. <laughs> How would you summarize this book, Richard? <laughs> I, I think uh, I think of the pattern. Now that we've been through it again, I think the, it's um, the patterns of civilization uh, to initiate, to grow, to develop, to then peak and then start to be, become corrupt, and the um, and uh, to de ultimately to de decay, be conquered, and that seems to have gone on on and on, again and again through history, and I think that's what John is trying to, uh, what the Lord is trying to say <clears throat> through the writings. Uh, but ultimately, there is a final kingdom, yes. which is God's kingdom, which once it comes into place, that's it. We're locked in. Thanks be to God. Amen. That that, uh, that pattern that we see repeated over and over through history um, 
culminating with the uh, the monstrous Antichrist, uh, all of that, once that's um, done away with, uh, God's kingdom uh, comes in, uh, and once it's established, that's that's the conclusion. We have to consider consider that that's the um, that's the end game, so to speak. Amen. And that's just one summary, but you know, I mean, that's what that's what I'm, I'm reading. Having gone through it with you all this time around, that's kind of what I'm. The first thing I think of, if I had to summarize uh, what the book's about, what I got out of it this work, what I got out of it this time. Amen. And for me, I think about the first chapter is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The second and third chapters are about letters to that era, as well as every era since. And then 4 to 22 is kind of laying out the future, the, the rapture, the tribulation, the first part of the tribulation, the second part of the tribulation, um, judgments, final kingdom, millennial kingdom, new heaven, new earth, new city, um, new standards, new everything. Um, and I'm pretty happy that the book ends on a high note because um, some of the some of the uh, some of the judgments are so graphically difficult to read through. But here's yeah. the end: we have a new heaven, a new earth, a heavenly city that glows. And we're in the presence of Jesus, and how precious all of that is. So we, Rich and I will have discussion, and then we'll, we'll tell you what we're going to tell you about tomorrow or tomorrow. Lord, yeah, we ask you to bless. Input, it would, this would be the time, folks, and something you particularly want to study, uh, we'd appreciate your input. Okay. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you for the happy ending of the book. We thank you that we can be reflectors of your glory and honor that we can live lives of truthfulness, of justice, of peace, of compassion, and of course, of agape. Transform me, O oh Lord, so I can make a difference. In Christ's name, amen. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for, again, your word, uh, this uh, culminating uh, masterpiece of the, uh, 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 the apocalypse is really what Revelation translates as the, uh, but the notion that it's done uh, within your game plan to bring about ultimate righteousness, uh, the way, the truth, and the life in Yeshua, which is uh, agape, uh, as the final outcome. We praise you for uh, all that you bring forth to us. We're not at that final threshold yet, but uh, uh, we should. Uh, uh, but it's so important that we have these perspectives to help us as things come up. And we, so we appreciate your continued guidance that we might live lives that uh, bless you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Blessings to you all. Okay.